everyone, it's Sakia from December's Divine 555. To all my December warriors, welcome back. To new any to any new viewers, welcome to my channel. You guys are so welcome here, and I'm sending you all an abundance of peace, love, and most importantly, truth. I am just out here in a really serene space out in nature. And I'm just here. I'm just here on the day of December 21st, the first day of the winter solstice, the day of the great Jupiter Saturn conjunction. And I'm sure just reflecting. I'm just reflecting right now. Yesterday was my Earth Day birthday, and I feel like everyone really should just be in a space of reflection today and beyond. I mean, there's so much to really, truly meditate upon during the space and time. I just got done a group meditation and I feel really good. I feel at peace. I'm still just in a space of appreciation and joy and gratefulness and love and light, balance. I want everyone to understand that there is a great awakening happening and there is a major shift that has happened, is happening, is going to be experienced differently by everyone. I know so many have heard so many different opinions about this day and the shift. But just know that if you're here, if you are open to truth and understanding that there is no right or wrong answer and the only truth is knowing that there's always more to know and questioning everything as you evolve knowing that there will always be more questions and there will always be more seeking and more growing and more ascending and more work and more progression and more transformation so again I'm just in this beautiful energy and I'm sitting out here, the sun is shining bright, shining on me, and I feel clear. And all I did in my meditation was ask for more clarity and ask for more peace and more love. And I don't know about anybody else, but <laughs> I feel great, you know. Um, I'm fasting today, maybe like an intermediate fasting. Like lately, my appetite has been minimal. Um, I've just been operating off of pure sun energy. Um, you love, you know, um, I, 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 I eat very minimal. It's not because I don't desire it. It's just because I just don't have the, the need. It's just like my body doesn't need the food you know I'm, I'm a vegan so I I already don't eat meat I already you know try to keep a high alkaline diet um, but lately yeah I mean people probably have been experiencing this as well just you know very low appetite that's just your body and your and your and your spirit just acclimating to these energies these shifts um, that we're going through 
So, depending on where you are in the world, you should be able to see this event. You know, I would recommend getting like um, Skyview Light app or some type of like um, app where you can view um, the the planets. <clears throat> but more than anything, guys, it's just a shift in in frequency from 3D to 5D. and the beginning of a new age, a new way. Now, with this conjunction between Saturn and Jupiter, <clears throat> it's, it's eventful because this Jupiter-Saturn conjunction it falls on the winter solstice and I believe that the winter solstice, the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction and the fact that it's conjuncting in Aquarius, this happened not less than 800 years ago. So the significance and the energy and the impact that this conjunction will have on us as a collective, on the planet, on Mother Gaia, on the universe is cataclysmic, okay? I think, yeah, <laughs> cataclysmic is like an event that happens that changes things um, outside of our control. Catacosmic is something that happens that is man-made uh, you know that changes things but of course Jupiter and Saturn conjuncts like every 20 years and um, again the last one the major event that surrounded that was 9-11 and also the next significant thing about this is that Every 2,500 years, every 2,500 years, we move into a new age, a new age, a new era. We're moving from the Piscean age into the Aquarian age, okay? Twenty-five years from now, we'll be moving into the Capricorn age, <laughs> but that's the significant, the significance of what's happening here. You know, Piscean age is all about. You know, Piscean is a deep, deep water sign. It's um, you know ruled by the planet Neptune, traditionally ruled by Jupiter, um, but it's about. expansion on a deeper level and as, as well as you know perception and illusion and delusion you know the, the mist the fog and almost it's almost like an energy of being controlled by forces and accepting and believing and we're moving from the Piscean age into the Aquarian age which is all about Ingenuity, intellect, truth, revolution, looking and coming from an emotional place with a new perspective that leans more toward truth and humanitarian acts. So it's a new era it's a new age it's a new dawn and with this shift that's happening with this jupiter saturn conjunction 
we are preparing for a shift in vibration. And the planet is waking up and we're gonna need this energy that we are going to be receiving so that we can really make the shift so that Mother Gaia can make the shift that she has been craving and that all of the beings all over this universe have been waiting for. But yeah. I'm just sitting here. Right now the moon is in Pisces. It is left Aquarius. So prepare for a couple of days of intense emotions. And yeah, there's a helicopter flying over right now. But prepare for Neptune energy to come through strong with the moon. I mean, the moon is in its uh, relaxing phase and coming off of this um, winter solstice, you know, the winter solstice is like, is the darkest day and um, moving toward Within you, within other people around you. Feelings of, of, of sacrifice, of um, things that you have sacrificed, things that you no longer want to sacrifice. You know, um, the next couple of days should bring up feelings or it should bring up a desire to focus on your health, to focus on your family. To focus on themes around how you overgive, how you handle your emotions in regards to how you give or overgive or what you accept, what you don't accept. In the Tarot, the Pisces energy represents the Eight of Cups, the Nine of Cups, the Ten of Cups. So it's all things like associated with like your emotional happiness, how you feel on an emotional level. Are you being satisfied? Are you being fulfilled emotionally? Where are you headed to? What are you moving toward? What do you have to walk away from? What do you have to separate yourself from in order to be emotionally fulfilled? It speaks on childhood trauma, you know, emotional feelings that revolve around abandonment issues, childhood inner childhood work, that inner child work that needs to be done. It also focuses on feeling, again, happy. What makes you feel happy? What makes you feel sad? You know, um, what do you have in your life that makes you feel fulfilled emotionally? You know, it also deals with selfishness. Are you, are you selfish? How are you giving? How are you sharing what you have? And it also revolves around family, fulfillment, wholeness, wish fulfillment.
but yeah, so next couple days it will be a lot of emotional, um, maybe purging, maybe understanding, you know, because again, Pisces is moon energy as well, you know, but, um, but yeah, so that's the rambling that I'm going to do, I guess, uh, for this, um, for this, um, uh, this, I guess, I don't know, I would say chat. I may pull a couple of cards, but I'm, I'm going to start with an oracle that I pulled, and I think it's so fitting for this winter solstice and Jupiter-Saturn conjunction slash um, moving out of a 2,500-year period from the Piscean Age to the Aquarian Age. Everything is going on in the world, so yeah, I'm going to read an oracle that I feel is perfect for this time. I'm basically just here just to wish everyone a happy winter solstice to let you know that I love each and every one of you. I, I appreciate your support. I appreciate the love and the unity consciousness that I feel with all of you. You're my soul family, my soul tribe. Some of you have been here from the beginning. Some of you are new. Either way, you know, it's just love. It's, it's love. It's raising the vibration. It's raising the consciousness. It's knowing that even in the darkest and coldest night, even in the twilight of the darkest and coldest night of December, remember that you'll be fine. There's nothing that can stop what's truly divine. And that is my motto. That is what I believe in at a soul level. And there will be no intimidation, okay? We will make it through these times. We will prevail. No matter how many vaccines they roll out, no matter how much they try to restrict us from being together no matter how much restriction no matter how many lockdowns no matter where you are all over the world whether you're in the UK whether you're in Australia Africa United States they cannot they cannot take away what is our birthright and that is to be free okay free it's a great awakening happening all over the planet and the elites can't stop that you know, and that's what we are here for. That's what we signed up for. To be here, star seeds, the crystal be the crystallers, the rainbow children, the indigo children, the chosen ones. We're all here. Light workers, guides, we're ascended masters, teachers, healers, we're all here. And we signed on to be here in this space, in this moment, in this time, to be the light in the darkness. Because through the dark, there is a path. And it's always darkest before the dawn. As I started my meditation earlier today, um, before I did my guide to the group meditation that I joined in, I closed my eyes as I was sun gazing and immediately after i closed my eyes i saw bright white heart and i never really see that it was right in the space of my third eye and it was a bright white heart and it was small and it started to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and, grow. and i just know love is gonna win love has won we have won and all we have to do is go within and continue to spread love because love is all we need love is the highest frequency and it was confirmation for me but I'm not gonna make this a long video so I'm going to go ahead and read this Oracle guys for you the Oracle I hope you can see it because it's kind of sunny out here and it's um, number 12 it breaks down to number three. It reduces to the number three. Threes are about balance being restored. It's about Christ consciousness. It's about consciousness. Consciousness is all about being aligned, being balanced. Rising in consciousness to a certain level where you break free of the chains and the control it's operating in a space of love and peace 
compassion. All right, so number 12, breaking down to the number three, a perfect number to have on this day of the winter solstice, the great Jupiter-Saturn conjunction, and moving from the Piscean age to the Aquarian age after 2,500 years, this is a day, a day to remember because we are experiencing a great awakening. We are in the middle of the most significant shift that this planet has ever, ever experienced. And we all should be absolutely astounded, dumbstruck that we are here to experience this. All right, so I'm, in, I'm full of joy and I'm full of love. And I hope that that love and joy is being felt by each and every one of you because each and every one of you are in my thoughts always okay and again this card divine discontent i'm just gonna set it up here like oh, hopefully i'm not sure Oops, that's not gonna work i'm just gonna put on my gloves because my hands are getting cold and we're gonna read it and then we're gonna pull a couple of cards to confirm and then um oracle or two um Let's see. Oh, guys, I love it. I, I love the, crisp, the crispness out here. The day after my birthday, Earth Day. And um, <laughs> it's, I, I got to tell you, it's, it's interesting having your birthday on December 20th and being right smack in the middle of all these powerful shifts that we are experiencing right now. But I'm just happy to be free and I'm happy to be standing in my power, knowing that my birthright is to be free. No one can take away my, my ability to breathe fresh air. No one can force me to wear a mask 24 seven, that I know who I am and my birthright is to be free on this planet. Mother Gaia is ready to shift her frequency so that she can pour love out on each and every one of us. Our birthright is to breathe in good, beautiful prana, not breathe in our own breath constantly. Our birthright is to be in nature, to look at the water, to look at the birds, to interact with our fellow human beings and animals and this cycle, this control that we have experienced for eons is about to crumble and we are about to have a reset to where we're in control of ourselves. The Aquarian age is all about individual, emotional, intellectual truth and standing in that truth and working together with other people in that truth, not accepting everything that we're told and we're ready to build a new world in a way that is changing this universe. Our children are not going to grow up 20 years from now thinking that it's okay to walk around not seeing other people's smiles separated in classrooms while they learn no no they're going to be able to be in group settings where there is love all around where there is not this education system that's teaching them to learn enough to work in the matrix and make enough money to just survive and then to die and reincarnate again they are going to understand that 
life is about freedom it's about love it's about sharing it's about understanding and in the 5d in the new earth we are going to be able to experience each other helping each other guiding each other wanting for nothing it's beautiful and I'm not gonna ramble I'm not gonna ramble I'm gonna get to the message and the message is about divine discontent and that is what I'm feeling right now divine discontent divine discontent divine discontent number 12 reducing to the number three balance is being restored the lighting is a little odd out here so bear with me guys divine discontent winter falls upon us so spring can bring new growth cry the tears allow the longing sadness brings surrender and a deep desire to be free I know your heart I hear it breaking and groaning in the dark night when you imagine yourself to be silently cast adrift in sleep it speaks to me that sacred heart of yours whispering its longing and bemoaning its divine discontent it knows when something is amiss I sense that something is not quite right as yet there is a piece of the puzzle missing even in the tremendous gratitude for all that is and there is much gratitude and sweet appreciation in that precious heart of yours there is a murmuring a questing it cries out to heaven vouchsafe me a blessing I cannot go on I am broken and in need of your tenderness for healing I am empty and in need of filling, not with stuff and bits, but with the most precious nectar of divine fulfillment. Nothing else will satisfy me. Please, please restore me to wholeness. I can bear this missing piece, this broken disarray no longer. I listen and I conjoil that wise heart of yours. I praise it for its honesty and longing. For the longing is an irresistible perfume to the beloved, attracting the only salve that will soothe the divine discontent of your truth-speaking heart, that of divine presence, absolute and unquestionable. There is a sense within you, perhaps quite obvious to your conscious mind, or perhaps only dimly registered as an unnameable underlying sense of anxiety that something in your life is not quite right. It may be the sense, even amongst so much gratitude, of a yearning yet to be met, a longing yet to be fulfilled and satisfied. This is the pain of the awakening heart. The heart is capable of bliss and ecstatic reverence for the sheer beauty and wonder of creation. Yet as the heart matures, there will be a process of deep passionate longing that awakens for the divine. It is the patience for the caress of the great lover, for the presence of the divine to come to you. Over time, that longing will grow from a mild inner sense of incompleteness, needing to welcome the whole. It will develop into a holy fever, a sacred rage, a stamping of dancing feet, a pounding of fists upon the altar and a longing so deep and distressing that one may well break into tears at the impossibility of bearing the pain of apparent separation for even a moment longer as devotion grows and passion for the divine intensifies so too does this yearning so much that this may come to feel as though your heart is breaking for the divine or perhaps you are not quite there yet your heart is attached to smaller gods such as your status your job your lover your body looking a certain way or being able to live your life in a particular way these smaller gods are not necessarily an issue yet you have drawn this oracle and so it is guidance for you
that the divine wants to draw you closer. Sometimes that means we will have the meager meal rested upon and from our hands so we may feast upon something far more delectable and grand. The divine is a fiercely possessive lover, a fiercely possessive lover. If there is a face of another beloved preventing you from longing for the divine embrace, and if you cannot see that it is the divine beloved within your love or your lover that you are loving, well then, something will be done by heaven. So make your relationships. Sacred saint, seek the divine in all things. When you cannot, when the power of lesser gods has you in its grip, acknowledge it, bear witness to it. Do not chastise, instead be truthful. Let your heart break and lie prostrate on the floor, hands clutching and head bowed as though only your sadness and plight could stir the heart of the divine beloved into descent of score and grace, saving you from a life far too bland for your exquisite Epicurean palate. But if you must, just don't misinterpret the pain and think that something really is wrong. If you are surrounded by status and money and cannot understand why you should mourn, it is even more important that you allow yourself to do so. Mourning is to be felt. Understanding is not so relevant. But if you must seek understanding, then know this, dear blazing angel, you are just waking from the deepest slumber and wish your awakening heart. And with your awakening heart, you are realizing a truth, a part of you deeper and wilder, vaster and more instinctive, truthful and intellect filled than your mind is lonely for the divine embrace. This is right. This is sensible. This is sanity. It is the pain, the real noble pain of the heart that says there is something more than this inadequacy, this settling for plastic instead of precious gemstones that must end now. I cannot be fed by pixelated sunsets and animation upon my computer screen. I yearn to be blasted by so much radiance and beauty by the real thing that I become stupefied. I must witness so much divine splendor that all I can utter is some incoherent grunt, my mind assembled and my heart ignited by the presence of my beloved. I want to become a fumbling ecstatic wreck in the presence of my beloved. I want to allow this pain, this yearning, this divine discontent to guide me to my holy lover so my life may never be the same again. And so it shall be. The discontent divine growing within you is the beginning, not the destiny. Its purpose is to lead you into your greatest connection yet with the divinity. Do not resist it, witness it, do not dismiss Do not dismiss it, trying to cover up its smells with rose petals. Let your rank discontent be the pathway to divinity. Look beyond what is, what has been prized and treasured, and is now found to be plated and not the precious gold it was once esteemed to be. Don't be scared, for you are my sidekick on this great holy adventure. I am here, you see? Just around the corner, I have you in my sights, though you may not even see me yet. I am holding a loaf of fresh bread, hot from the kitchen of the Creator, hoping to entice you with this wafting and wafting sense. Tempting you to follow me on towards something of far more substance. If you are still stuck on pine scented air freshener, imagining it as anything akin to the wild scent of the pine forest for real, 
then how can I tempt you? Let the stench be the stench. Then the fragrance of God's source can be discerned. And together we can leave what is less behind once and for all, grabbing like hungry school children for the divine bread with sweet, fresh scent filling the air. Say the following aloud if you choose to with your hand on your heart. Universe who loves me unconditionally, guide me now. I acknowledge the gratitude in my heart, genuine and fierce, and I acknowledge the hunger for the divine unfolding in my belly, the urge forward towards some unknown, indescribable sacred satiety. Guide me to the holy table where the true feast awaits. I am no longer satisfied by stale crumbs or the remnants of another's feast. I want to feast with the Holy One, the Great One, to know directly and for myself that I am divine. With you and with your mercy, grace, and wisdom, guide me there, dearest brother of my soul. I cast my soul into your care. and follow my divine intuition. I follow my nose toward the sweetest scent of the holy feast. Say aloud, I release that which is not worthy for my soul to feast upon. I do not decide this for myself from a place of mistrust or judgment. I surrender my attachment and I trust in the sacred workings of life to present me what is needed. I surrender, I surrender in sacred trust. I surrender. May my life be governed by love for the greatest good and in holy service to love now. So it is. Wow, divine discontent. Now, this is really touching on the last reading that I did. It was a uh, divine energy update, okay, about darkest before the dawn and surrendering, all right? At this point, all you can do is surrender, surrender, release, and believe. Surrender, release, and believe, okay? Beautiful, divine discontent. Hang on, no matter where you are in your journey, if you're at the beginning and you're having a difficult time letting go, you feel this urge for something more, whether you're far on your journey and you're just tired, how many times have you been, been incarnated into this, on this planet, you know, and you're tired and you just want, you want to see it, you wanna feel it for yourself, you know, um, this, shift this energy 5d new earth you want to feel it for yourself but the divine is telling you to just be patient surrender surrender and believe and no not believe no okay belief is the piscean age knowing is the aquarian age okay so that is your oracle and it is getting pretty cold um and the sun is going down so it's getting harder for you guys to see the card so i'm gonna try to pull a couple more cards just to get some energy going for us and we're gonna cut this video short okay let's see if i can get more light um yeah and my feet are kind of in the camera but it's okay okay let's see Whew. let's see if I can pull some cards I'm gonna pull and see if I can get a um, faded overall energy for what we're doing here today and see what comes up. Oh, 
it is crisp out here, but I love it. The sun is bright. It's shining on me. And I'm with all of you, my soul family. Okay, let's see what comes out. All knowing source, divine spirit, archangels, ancestors, ascended masters, God be above, inner earth, my galactic family. Can you give us some messages for this day, for this winter solstice, for this Jupiter Saturn conjunction? Okay, for this new age. Can we get any messages? I'm trying to shuffle with my gloves on, guys, so. Let's see what spirit has to give us. Okay, I'm gonna have to take my gloves off for the this. We're just gonna pull a couple of cards. Just a couple. Important messages for this energy today. Important messages for this energy today. Whoa, that flew out. Woo! We had the lovers. The lovers. Yes. Yes, this is about relationships. This is about divine counterparts, twin flames. This is important relationships in your life. This is divine love energy okay take love out of it it's about a choice examining your motives when deciding which path to take okay 3d 5d it's a choice it's a path that needs to be taken so examining your motives when taking that path when taking that choice at the end of the day we have the lovers card here is number six all right six is all about love it's about partnerships it's about birthing something beautiful and sixes are about balance as well okay so we have the lovers we have the lovers what other messages faded overall energy for planetary alignment today <laughs> justice justice okay um represented by the number 11 all right 11 is about portals okay if you look at the number 11 there's an entryway between the two ones all right so this is about a portal opening up all right this is about the shift, Earth's ascension, and being prepared as we're walking through this portal, all right? And of course, justice, Libra energy, and we have um, the lover's card, Gemini energy. So um, this is the scales being balanced. This is equilibrium. This is fairness. Karma. Everything being balanced. Truth. Twin flame unions coming into balance. The world coming into balance. There's definitely a portal that's opening up, so it's about being prepared. Justice. Lovers. Let's get one more card for the faded overall energy. Whew. Right on top of both of the cards, we have the chariot. So, wow. Gemini, Libra, Cancer. 
chariot, all right? This is faded energy. This is the number seven, all right? Um, cancer energy, again, it could also be Sagittarius energy, but either way, it's forward movement. Sevens are about drive, passion, power, travel, making a decision on a path, lovers, examining your motives when deciding which path to take, justice, karma, things coming full circle into balance and the chariot. Moving forward on that path to a new way, the Aquarian age, Jupiter, Saturn conjunction, winter solstice. So with the chariot energy again, it's upright. So again, with the hand there, it's all divinely guided. And when the chariot is upright, we have the divine guiding, creating balance as we're moving forward, okay? We have the white horse and the black horse that represents um, masculine and feminine energies, duality, okay? Light and dark. Masculine, feminine. And everything is balanced and as it should be. And we're moving forward, okay? Beautiful energy. Beautiful energy. I'm sorry if you guys can't see the cards. But. I'm just going to pull just a few cards on, on these. Bottom of the deck, we have the star. Not sure if you can see it, but Aquarius energy, Aquarian age, all right? Jupiter Saturn conjunction, winter solstice, following our true north. Hope, renewal. Recognizing the light within, preparing for a new perspective let's get one or two cards to clarify this faded overall energy of the lovers justice and chariot the lovers justice in the chariot we have the four swords in reverse okay so things are darkest before the dawn when the um four of swords is in reverse it's kind of the idea that there's a lot to move on from after the three of swords is the four of swords so to get to the four of swords you've had had to go through a lot of pain betrayal heartbreak loss okay the four of swords is a missed opportunity a time out that someone didn't take it's blockages stagnation Missed opportunity, interference, okay? And that's what we're moving past, you know, coming into balance, the lovers, justice, and the chariot, moving forward from the four of swords and reverse energies, blockages, stagnation, pain, unable to get over certain things. What else? Clarify the lovers, justice, and the chariot, please. Wow, oh, yes. We have the Queen of Cups, all right? For me as a reader, Scorpionic energy, but any of the intuitive energy, water signs can embody the Queen of Cups or anybody in that energy. All right, we have the Queen of Cups with the Ten of Wands in reverse. The Queen of Cups is staring directly at the Four of Swords in reverse, contemplating all the pain of the past, all of the competition, the deception, the old ways of doing things. That's Libra energy, corruption. 
And the Queen of Cups, okay, is intently staring at that chalice and reviewing all of the mental chaos and pain and the, the untruths that we've been fed. And the Queen of Cups is still here upright, looking, facing the past, but still in her power, unconditional love personified, healing, light worker, star seeds. It's love energy and it's inspiration, aspiration, purity, okay? And then we have the 10 of wands, Sagittarius energy or fire, all right? When the 10 of wands is upright, it is, you know, it's a burden, you know, you come a long way. Obviously tens are a cycle that's being completed in a new beginning, but when it's upright, you're moving forward, you're tenacious, you're strong, but the load is heavy and you want to release it. It's beautiful that it came up inverted and reversed because this means that the burden is being released. It's about surrendering. It's about letting go. It's about knowing the truth, standing in that truth and just allowing the universe to do what it's meant to be done so that earth can ascend so that we can move from 3d to 5d and that we can release these burdens this is also a reminder to not get distracted to not feel paranoid to keep staying in your power in this love energy the queen of cups okay you don't have to forget but you have to forgive and you got to stay in the love energy and you also have to release detach from the things that no longer serve the greatest and highest good and to also know that a surrendering is needed and that all is well it's a new beginning it's a new cycle it's a new age and that's where we are with this energy okay the lovers justice and the chariot we're moving forward and it's happening quite quickly with the chariot energy here quite quickly and it's beautiful all right guys it is nice and bitter cold out here so we are going to just pull um pull oracles and then we are going i'm going to wrap things up pack up as i'm losing sunlight here losing sunlight so we're gonna go ahead and whew, go ahead and get a few oracles to end this I'm surprised that I can even shuffle these cards my, my fingers are frozen but I'm here with you all, and it's golden. I feel, I feel really happy. <laughs> As I'm splitting the deck, we have the free will card that came up. They can't take away our free will. Absolutely not. Okay, guys, so... Can we get some oracles to close the reading? Annoying oh, source, divine spirit. Oracle guidance for this energy. Divine advice, please. Whew. We have numbing and shadow work. Shadow work is never is never done no matter where you are on your journey again we have the divine discontent card if you feel discontent with your life if you feel that your world is shattering that you want to move to a new space but you're so attached to what is okay if you feel stuck if you're going through a dark night of the soul understand that it's all part of the divine plan. So 
sometimes you're left with no one, left with nothing. Every avenue you take is a dead end. You feel you got a crappy hand dealt to you. You try and, and nothing changes and you feel alone and everyone that you love has left you and you feel empty and you feel discouraged. Sometimes everything around you will fall away. Everything will go wrong because what the universe is trying to teach you is that you need to go within and you need to face yourself, love yourself. And at the end of that journey, if you get to that point, you start to find your way out of the darkness, okay? And you feel numb. You feel that there's a numbing, you feel alone. But if you push through the darkness, you will find your light. Through the dark, there is a path. And that is what the divine is saying. With this shift, it's gonna be different for everyone. But there will be things that will be revealed and truths that will be revealed. And you have to hold your light. No matter where you are on your path, if you've been on this journey for a long time, there may still be things that come up for you to, to review and to work through. It's okay. It's okay. We have stay committed. Stay committed with a commitment card. Stay committed. And we also have patience. Patience. I'm not even sure if you guys can see these. Patience. I'll do some something to maybe lighten things up a bit let's see if we can get any more divine advice divine advice for the collective please <sighs> okay so we have unawakened all right remember we had the lover's card so there's always a choice there's always a choice there's always a choice you know there's some who will awaken and there's some who won't examining your motives when deciding which path to take now is the time to make the choices for your life now is the time to decide to reinvent yourself reinvent yourself the last two cards we have are deception so it's, it's a reminder to be mindful of what's happening with this, this energy, okay? As the split happens, there will be deception exposed. There will be truths uncovered. And now is the time to take action on healing, doing the work to address your karma, releasing, detaching, letting go of unhealthy attachments so that you can begin to heal and receive the communication that you need during this, this time bottom of the deck we have divine masculine and the answer is yes so a lot of um themes around the patriarch and a, a new way in the new way in the new age Aquarian age it's about truth it's about breaking down the patriarchy okay and I'm getting with the Divine Masculine card that there will be a lot of Divine Masculines awakening during this period. The answer is yes to whatever it is that you are concerned about feeling. The answer is yes. Wow. So we'll leave it there, guys. The lovers, justice, the chariot, forward movement, balance, partnerships unconditional love it's the ending of a cycle following your true north hope renewal 
happy winter solstice to everyone. It was beautiful connecting with each and every one of you on this very special day of the winter solstice, the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction, and this magnificent time that we're in right now. 2,500 years, the Aquarian age. Guys, I love you. It's extremely cold, but I'm here with all of you guys, and um, my heart is on fire with love. And um, know that I absolutely love each and every one of you. Stay in your power. Keep your vibrations high. Have patience during this time.